Yeah, well, uh, this week we will continue our discussions on uh, measurements. And in this lecture, particularly, I'll be talking about errors in measurements. Well, uh, one very fundamental rule in measurements, to be good measurements, is a wrong measurement or data is not a measurement. or data. Okay. It's very important that you know we need not spend a lot of resources on putting up transducers around the machines to collect data with an objective to monitor the condition of the machine. But if the data itself is wrong for reasons unknown to us, uh, because of our ignorance uh, and because as you know in CBM all our decision depends on the data. Okay. And if this data is wrong, my decision on the machine's condition would be wrong and that is what one would not do. And as you know by now uh, that in CBM, I have a machine on which I put a transducer and I have a signal conditioner and then get some data. So, on analysis of the data, I infer the machine's condition. So, when you are talking about transducers, we will see that what is the possible errors while measuring using a transducer and how we can avoid it. Okay. Now, to explain these two important errors in measurements, If I want to classify them, one is a bias error and other is a random error. Let me just illustrate what I mean by a bias error or a random error. Okay. Now, suppose this the center of the circle is my target, is my desired data or is my accurate representation of the physical condition of the machine. But while doing a measurement, I am getting things randomly around the target, but not quite equal to the bullseye. In another case, I have data which are very precise Okay, and located at one point. So, if you will see here that this could be considered as one large dot offset by n value epsilon and this if you will see if you average them this will hit the bullseye. So, this kind of an error is the what is known as the random error and this is known as the bias error. So, I need to be both accurate and precise. So, accuracy and precision, there is a difference in the sense how accurate I am to the target is this explanation and how precise I am by an I am only offset by an 
quantity epsilon. So, a good transducer will be both accurate and precise. That means, if I repeat the number of measurements, I am always going to get the same value. value. So, this is the precision and accurate means I am always close to the target or at the target. Now, any transducer which we measure, which we buy from the market has some features in it, most important being its range, sensitivity, Okay. We need to know these quantities, so that the mechanical quantities which we are measuring can be equally or it can be represented with an equivalent electrical value or a voltage value. But question is, is my measurement repeatable? That means, every time I measure am I able to get the same value or not. So, this would indicate the precision of the instrument okay. and then. So, question is this error which we discuss about random error, how can I reduce random error? Obviously, if I average the measurements by averaging I can reduce random error. If you go back to this diagram here, if I average all the measured values here, I would be coming close to my target, that is the target value. So, usually to wherever we see that the measurement is scattered around a point, we can always average it. For example, my now my target is here, but I am getting all values around this place. So, even if I average it, I may get a value around here. So, this is both having a, having a bias error and a an random error. Okay. So, these combinations can happen in the instrumentation or in the measurements. And now, in the next one, to bias error, we can remove the offset, remove offset to reduce the bias error. And this is actually done by what is known as a calibration. We will talk about calibration just in a little while. So, by calibration we can remove the bias error. Okay. Now, how do we I calibrate? So, there are many methods of calibrating. One is we have our reference source. source or a standard, where we will compare the results from the transducer and the reference transducer. So, we will compare. So, whatever is the difference, will be the offset error. So, we can always remove the offset, whichever is whether it is positive or negative and then we can remove the offset from the measured values. So, then we can reduce the bias errors. 
but then something regarding this reference source I, have, I will tell you in subsequently. But then suppose the sensitivity is not known, how do I do or what do I do? Suppose I have a transducer, I put on a machine. I get some x volts. Now, this x volts corresponds to some y mechanical quantity, right. So, unless I know the sensitivity, sensitivity will be some, you know, s volts for mechanical quantity. So, the if I get actual mechanical quantity will be nothing but the measured voltage x volts divided by s ok. Sensitivity, so the, the unit will be some mechanical quantity. So, this sensitivity is something which the transducer manufacturer provides. Okay. And the question is, if I have a measurement chain, wherein I have got a transducer, I have got a signal conditioner, I have got some cable and then I have a display. So, this in this cable also there could be some attenuation. For example, if you are talking about long cable, now you are measuring the condition of a propeller bearing in a large ship, okay, where, where the cable could be about 100 meter long. So, there could be voltage drop because of the resistance in the cable. So, then we will get some display. Okay. So, in this case and then here I could have given some gain in the amplifier. So, all these factors are not known to me. So, what happens if I measure my actual quantity is some uh, quantity m is the mechanical quantity. I will get some voltage x okay, or going back to the previous diagram have the mechanical quantity, I am getting some x volts. Okay. If I take the manufacturer sensitivity, my actual quantity mechanical quantity is nothing but x by s. Okay. But I do not know what is my gain value what is my cable drop in the cable. So, usually in such a scenario, we always give a known mechanical quantity in the field, particularly while you are measuring vibrations. So, there are calibrators which will give you a known mechanical quantity. So, if I get, if I know this is, I am giving an actual input of 10 meters per second square and I am getting x volts. I know whenever I get y volts, it will corresponds to uh, uh, 10 by x times y okay, and so on. So, this field calibration or field calibration of transducers is important, because in such a scenario, I need not worry about what is the voltage drop in the cable, what is the gain set in the amplifier and so on. I have been to many factories wherein you know people produce a 
set of voltage values from a transducer and say what I am asking what is wrong with the machine. This becomes very difficult for the diagnostics engineer because we did no, do not know what is the actual physical mechanical quantity. So, always it is good to have a calibration done in the field by there are certain handheld calibrators for accelerometers even for strain gauges there could be some sound bridge calibrators strain gauge even for I would say handheld or portable calibrator for thermocouples. We will talk about these later on from IR cameras for microphone. So, different calibrators are available depending on the type of transducer even for ultrasonic gauges. Otherwise, what happens unless I give a known physical quantity, whatever voltage I get at my display, uh, there is no relationship. Okay. So, one has to carry in CBM in the condition monitoring kit uh, such a calibrator so that this can be done. But this was regarding the field calibration, but sometimes in the labor laboratory or in the factory in, in their tool room, you can have a reference, a reference standard, okay, which need not be used daily, but you know any transducer which goes out to the field can be brought back to the laboratory or to the tool room to check the values against the reference standard kept locally in that place because as you all know there are many national and international standards of measurements and all of these refer. So, because we have a lab level standard, we have a regional level standard, we have a national level standard and of course, the international level of standard. I will just give an example. Somebody says you know such a distance is 1 meter, right. How do you know that this is not 1.001 meter? or 0 0.999 meter, but 1 meter. Okay. So, these rulers or meter, meter length sticks, there are international calibration standards, they are checked against the regional standard, national standard, international standard. I will give you an example. Okay. When we uh, fill in petrol say 1 liter petrol in our vehicle. Okay. And if you have been to a petrol pump, you will see the you know, meter displaying 1 liter and such and such amount. But how do you know it is 1 liter and not 1 point uh, or 0.95 liter or you know, never it will be more, but it will be. So, why how do you know it is not less? So, if you will see in a nowadays in the petrol filling stations, they have a measuring measuring jar with a 1 liter mark. So, when the gas station attendant 
fills in petrol it will one liter means it will fill up to the standard. So, this jar has been standardized. So, we have the you know, department of weights and measures you know standards and so on. So, all the quantities we deal with you know because you know if you are talking about CBM is one aspect, but if you are talking about trade you know when we say so much metric tons of you know coal, iron ore, okay, crude how is how are you sure that it is so much. So, that is why in large scenarios we have you know way bridges which are calibrated okay, against whatever they are going to indicate. So, calibration becomes a very very important aspect in having correct measurements being done. Okay. So, when you talk about you know all the standard units of mass, length, seconds you know, and of course, the other 6 units uh, other 3 they are all calibrated and there is a reference standard international reference standard stored in the uh, you know, different labs throughout the world. Okay. Uh, so, all of us make our standards comparable to those standards. So, every day it is not possible to check our equipment against those standards, but if you see all the one instrument is instrument 1 is checked against instrument 2 against instrument 3. So, one is more accurate than the other and so on and then finally, they all go to the reference standard. So, this unknowingly to the CBM engineer these are all are done and if you look at the when we will talk about transducers in details later on if you took look at an accelerometer okay if you buy it it will come with a sensitivity okay say maybe 10 millivolt per meter per second square and it will say calibrated to such and such standard and it says uh, validity of the calibration calibration usually you know a one year period. So, every measurement which we do in CBM for every transducer be it an accelerometer be it a microphone be it a thermocouple be it an ultrasonic gauge be it an uh, uh, flow meter all of them are calibrated against some reference standard which is finally, calibrated or, or it is traceable to the international standards and as long as we have maintained a proper calibration of our transducers we would be doing a correct measurement. Of course, another reason possible reason why errors can happen is other reasons are these are these are when I talked about random error and bias error these are errors inherent because of the transducer itself but as a CBM engineer we can have errors introduced because of wrong mounting wrong operation using in a range not designed for okay. harmful or environmental conditions. In fact, you now I will just give you an example uh, with my mechanical watch. You now, we, we I was in a factory wherein there is a lot of magnetic field this happened in an aluminum smelter plant. Because of the <coughs> electromagnetic process by which this is done the electrolytic process 
as a very strong magnetic field. So, the mechanical watch which I wore uh, had a dissipation uh, for dissipative force being applied and the watch slowed. Okay. So, this was an environmental condition which could hamper your measurements. The clock or the watch which you are measuring will slow down in a strong magnetic field. So, we have to ensure for these scenarios which may happen uh, during a measurement and which can give us a wrong result. So, the watch would never show you, it will uh, show you a wrong timing. So, these kind of scenarios do happen. So, one has to be careful about it. Now, we will talk about how the range in which the transducer is not designed for, if you use it, what kind of errors will come in the subsequent class. But then, this is very important to keep in mind that uh, wrong measurements is uh, no measurements. Do not measure uh, wrongly if you uh, want to interpret anything out of the machine. So, as they call garbage in is garbage out. Because if you look at the software available today for data analysis, they will work on the data in data in okay and they will not of course nowadays you know, smart analytics have come up wherein they can tell you whether the data itself is having some wrong trends or uh, outliers which could be removed but everything depends on my data so the if the data is wrong the analysis would be wrong okay so to summarize, to reduce the random error, we need to average the measurements and to remove the bias error, we can have a calibration done. And the transducers, every transducer which is used for CBM has to have been calibrated to a reference standard and so on. So, more on this you can find in my book. Thank you.